Do travel advisors even still exist? And why would I hire someone to plan a trip when I can just book it myself? Oh, and also, I really don't think I have enough money to work with an advisor. Guys, these are some of the things that I hear when I tell someone that my mom and I are travel advisors. And listen, I get it, because transparently I think the travel advisor world is a bit mysterious and the curtain needs to be pulled back somewhat so that we can help younger generations really understand the value in working with an expert to plan your next trip. So that is why I am here making this video, but that's not all, folks. Surprise! I've brought in the legend Linda. It's been a while since we've I done a video I, like this. I kind of like that, the legend of Linda. The legend of Linda. <laughs> <laughs> and for anyone who's unfamiliar of the legend of Linda, this is my mom, Linda. She's been a luxury travel advisor for the last 15 years? Just about. Just about. Yeah. And that means she's done everything like planned destination weddings and luxury trips to far off places like India and Dubai, South Africa and Dubai, the all the things. And together, the two of us are co-founders of Gals Abroad Getaways, where we host and plan luxury trips for groups of women. Mm -hmm. And we have some exciting new announcements in the works for some of our 2023 destinations. So if you want to join us on a trip, make sure to check the link in the description of this video where we will announce all the details and give you some exclusive insider access. But for now, I'm going to put on my hard-hitting journalist hat on and ask you some questions about what it is like to be a travel advisor mm -hmm. and what exactly that means. Mm -hmm. You ready? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Okay, we're gonna start with a very bare bones basic question, which is, what exactly does a travel advisor even do? In general, a travel advisor's responsibility is to make the travel planning process for any client they work with kind of a seamless and easy and pleasant experience, you know, <laughs> as opposed to, I know some people by the time I'm working with them, they've tried doing a trip and I'm not talking domestic, I'm talking international, but they've tried doing a trip on their own and they suddenly have gotten mired in, you know, tons of research and still not really knowing. So really to get back to your question, it's about the planning process. It's about making it a pleasant experience. It's about making it an easy experience. And it's most importantly, putting a trip together that makes that trip an incredibly personal and meaningful experience. Essentially executing, at least in my case, executing every single detail. The flights, yes, of course, the cruise or the, you know, or the land-based trip, but it's the airport transfers, it's dining reservations, it's excursions, it's every single little detail. So I kind of want to run through all the different, I guess we'll call them perks of working with a travel advisor, which can be anything from, you know, your vetting process to know who you recommend is actually a reputable hotel, supplier, etc. VIP perks, all the different things. So mm -hmm. let's start with the vetting process for travel advisors, because I think that's something that a lot of people have problems with. They're like, how do I know that this is a good hotel? How do I know that this is a good tour operator? While I'd certainly love to be able to travel 365 days a year, and even if I did, think about, you know, <laughs> how many hotels there are. Right. It's impossible to do that. However, I am traveling regularly, and through all of the connections that I have, connections not just with Scorby Travel, not just with the network that, you know, we are affiliated with, but the suppliers that I work with, it's an ongoing conversation. The affiliation that Scorby Travel is a part of, which is called Oasis Travel Network, they have what is called an agent Facebook page. And that's where... You guys heard of Facebook? I know. <laughs> Basically a bunch of travel advisors in this Facebook group being like, have you heard of this hotel? Have you heard of this hotel? So it's like crowdsourcing information. Right. Also, if you hear a meowing going on, that's our cat. So if you hear this weird little meow, meow, that's Minxie, just, you know, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> Talk about like VIP perks, because everyone wants to be VIP, get the mm -hmm. perks, all those deals. Talk about how you're able to give your clients a little bit something extra when they book with you versus say booking directly with like a Expedia or even just the hotel's right. website. You're booking with, again, what you're saying in Expedia, my terminology is OTA, online travel agency. 
you know, the difference in booking, say, with an OTA versus a travel advisor. Are you getting breakfast included? Are you getting early and late checkout? Are you getting an automatic room upgrade if availability happens On availability. To be there? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it makes a huge difference. And more importantly, something that people don't understand uh, as it relates to that booking through Expedia or booking with a travel advisor, a lot of times people think it's more expensive. If you took the booking through Expedia or any of those other um, OTAs, and you compared it, my prices are the same. Those perks really add up. In Europe, for example, because of Scorby Travel being a part of Oasis Travel Network, Oasis Travel Network being a part of Signature Travel Network, a huge conglomerate. Before you continue, these are just basically- Umbrellas. Uh, like consortiums of different yeah. advisors. Yeah. To be able to leverage pricing and perks. So you go to the hotel in Rome, oh my gosh, there's a lunch that is totally free with wine pairing, or there's a wine tasting at the winery that's affiliated with the hotel. There are very, very tangible, meaningful perks. And how that works essentially is when you put a reservation at a hotel, that is flagged as like either a Scorby travel reservation or mm -hmm. a signature reservation, mm -hmm. which then brings in these extra bonuses that you would not get if you're just a regular reservation that's coming in either through the website or through Expedia. And I will tell you this, and I mean, not to make this general statement, but this is something we hear from a lot of hotels is that they, when they get a booking from Expedia or Hotels.com, it's kind of, they're like, ugh, they were an Expedia booking. Like they kind of roll their mm -hmm. eyes like that. Mm -hmm. And so you want, when you're coming to a hotel, you want to be treated VIP. You want to get that red carpet service. And so by booking with a travel advisor or booking directly with the hotel is in your best interest versus the Expedia and Hotels.com because sometimes depending on the hotel, they kind of turn up their nose at those bookings and their you know eye roll situation. Furthermore, when you have a problem with that booking, you're having to talk to Expedia, Hotels.com, wait on the phone, and you're kind of like a number. For every single client and for every single hotel, I'm contacting the hotel in advance. What am I doing? Oh, I'm confirming that the reservation is for three nights and not two. I'm confirming that it's a king bed and not a twin bed. I'm confirming the fact that, you know, they have scheduled themselves for dinner reservations or spa treatments and things like that. And, and it's their honeymoon and we want special exactly. flowers in the room or a bottle of champagne. It's just right. those little tiny things that go the extra mile. And no, and, and for some people, they don't care. They don't Whatever. care. But Generally, I can tell you that no one from Expedia or any OTA is doing that. <laughs> one of the biggest reasons I think anyone would hire a travel advisor is to save them time. Time is our most precious resource. So talk about the time that you can give back to your clients by you being the one to do all the exhaustive research and all the planning and all the calls and all the emails. Like, just kind of break that down for everyone. I'm always talking international, I'm not talking domestic, but when it comes to the planning of any trip, they said on average someone can spend 37 hours planning that trip. And because of I know how research intensive I am and how I wanna be confident of the information that I'm delivering to a client, I understand that statistic. Yeah, Linda spends like 60 hours. <laughs> no, but like, but it, you know, it isn't, it isn't just one review. Yep. Like I said to you, it's like I read deep and I mm -hmm. read from different sources. We all know that during the Panini times, travel advisors were vital for their clients in terms of answering questions or getting refunds or working with insurance companies mm -hmm. or cancellations or pushing trips back. Like all the things, it, get, it makes my head spin to think of all the things you did for your clients. But you were such a vital resource in this un these unprecedented times. Now we're in this kind of weird limbo zone where I feel like we've got one foot in the panini, one foot out. People are still confused. What do we do? People might have so many questions because like information is not maybe rapidly being updated and it's nice to have an expert to ask these questions to so that you don't have to be the one calling the restaurant, waiting on hold, Googling, doing all the things. That's what Linda's for. It's 
saving them the time, but it is also, I think, not only educating them on the destination and maybe how one specific city in and of itself has so much, but also educating them and helping them recognize the kind of traveler they are. Because there's there are the travelers that are like, okay, what am I doing at 9, 10, 11, 12, mm -hmm. 1, 2? And what are That's my me. you know, <laughs> what are my breakfast and my lunch and my dinner reservations? And there's the people who say, I don't want to do anything. I want to arrive. And the only thing I want to think about is getting my swimsuit on and my sunglasses and my sunscreen and I'm going to park myself on that beach and I don't want to do anything other than decide what cocktail I'm going to have. So <laughs> it's all of that education, shall we say, and also saving them time. Think about how, I don't even know if you have a number, but it's like how many trips have you planned to Italy? How many trips have you planned to Greece? So that when someone comes to you I can with do it this, in my sleep. you could do it in your sleep and you want someone who feels that confident about that destination to be planning your trip. And just to one last thing before we jump into the next question, just to give you an example, like when I plan Gals Abroad Getaways trips, I wish you could see the email chains of back and forth between me and our partners, for example, on this Greece trip that we're doing. I think I have probably 200 emails that have gone back and forth. <laughs> You're actually, if I were to print it, at 39 pages on one. Like, it is extensive. And so I am happy to do that. That is, it, it's weird to say, but I enjoy planning travel, thank mm -hmm. God, because that's mm -hmm. my job. But you, the person who wants to go and enjoy the trip, you probably don't want that many emails going back and forth so that's another reason why a travel advisor is so beneficial is it cuts out that little nitty-gritty of time of transfers okay I want this ferry oh wait no that ferry's not reputable how about this ferry like you just want to come and be done you know one of the number one questions that I am mm -hmm. always asked and I I understand because there's a little yeah. bit of mystery yeah. around it is how much does it cost to work with a travel advisor? Lots of people say, I can't afford a travel advisor. How much should I budget for one? So let us set the record straight and talk about how, how you get paid or mm -hmm. you know how much people should expect to pay when working with an advisor. Right, right. And really, like any other industry that you might be talking about, there are different structures. There are some travel advisors who charge what I will call like a trip planning fee. Um, some travel advisors, I'm not saying many, but some travel advisors will charge by the hour. So there are those. What I will spend the majority of my time speaking about is the way uh, I and Scorby travel work as it relates to the planning process and you know any associated fees. Generally speaking, the only fees I charge are for booking international um, flights. The structure and the way it works is travel advisors are compensated. So the price that I give you for a hotel, the price that I give you for that entire travel itinerary that includes your flights, that includes your airport transfers, that includes your hotels, that includes your activities, all of that, I am paid a part of, I give you a total for your trip. My compensation is built within that total. And you can, you know, when someone is working with an advisor, I hear Linda on calls all the time where people are asking this question, like feel empowered to ask the question if you want, if you are working with an advisor, you can ask what their fees are for booking an international mm -hmm. flight. You can ask these questions to really understand. Don't feel afraid to ask them, but I think it is something that needs the curtain pulled back just a little bit because people are always like, well, how does it work? But just to tell you, I, and I don't know if I, I'm okay to make this blanket statement, but generally speaking, like it's really no extra cost to you as the person hiring an advisor, aside from booking flights and you know booking Airbnbs. It's just where your money is allocated and exactly. what percentage of the money that you already would be paying is going to say a Linda versus an Expedia or Hotels.com. Exactly. Let's talk about our favorite question <laughs> that you get asked a lot of times, and I get asked this as well. And I, we don't mean to roll our eyes, but it's just, 
well, first let's explain the question. The question is, got any deals on travel? <laughs> I and I'll let you I'll let you answer. But one of the funny things that I saw recently was someone was asking if there's any deals on business class flights. And my kind of snide, snarky response was you might as well ask for like the winning numbers to the lottery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it is a pipe dream and not to say that they don't exist. When you see like $350 flight to Paris, you're like, oh my God, what a deal. And then when you click it and you see it's like, oh, it's at this other random airport or there's a weird connection time or I'm gonna be spending my time on a 16 hour late. Like there's all these different little things that make that flight a deal. And you have to ask yourself, Am I whether, willing? Yeah, is yeah. it worth it? Yeah. To some people it might be yeah. totally worth it. Like, yeah. and that's, you know, not to knock those people who are like, well, on that 16 hour layover, I could do this mm -hmm. in this city or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, it's understanding that like, when we see something that's shiny and flashy, we need to investigate a little bit further to see really what that deal is. And as much as I wish that I held this power in my hands, because I really would love to be able to like hook up my best friends with like free hotel stays or free flights or like I'm Oprah Winfrey, you get a flight, you get a free hotel room. Like there is just unfortunately no such thing that like a travel advisor can press the magic button and give you 20% off your hotel room or you know a free night or buy four nights get the fifth free like sometimes hotels do run those specials and if deals are important to you then maybe working with an advisor is not the route that you want to go on that specific trip maybe your credit card company is offering you a deal or maybe there's some deal at Black Friday at like a all-inclusive resort and you want to go mm -hmm. that direction like then definitely do that. But I would not say that coming to a travel advisor and saying, got any deals, you're probably not gonna get a response that you're looking for. Unless you told me, I'll give you one where you might. And you say, gosh, I know South Africa is so expensive. Um, and then I might say, well, you could consider, like you and I, when we did our first trip there, we went in the off season. We went in winter time because they're Southern Hemisphere, so of course their winter is June. Some destinations, Italy, forget it, but some destinations like South Africa, there is a tangible difference in the rates at those hotels, peak season versus off season. But once again, that's why you want to work with a travel advisor who can give you that kind of information. And that can be a tangible difference. And that you bring up a good point because I think one of the biggest things that, you know, if you are considering working with an advisor and you do have, you know, Linda works with people on every sort of budget level mm -hmm. for the most part. And it's good to have a number in your mind, at least a baseline of what you're wanting to spend for the trip. And then she can say, okay, for this destination and for these dates, not, not gonna, gonna happen. But what if we look at this month or what if we look at this destination and how can we make your trip and your budget work together? And that's again, a huge benefit for an advisor because you have the knowledge base to be able to advise so that you stay within that budget and get a fabulous trip. Explain what it looks like when someone comes to you, they want to work with you, kind of just briefly walk us through what that looks like, what your process is so that people understand what it's like to work with a travel advisor. Generally speaking, someone will initially send me an email and then I'll ask them a couple of questions and I will tell them, I hate to tell you this, but the first question I'm gonna ask you, besides your dates, um, are is, is really your budget. What amount are you spending? And when you are spending that, are, the number that you're giving me, is that including your flights? Is that including every part of your trip? Or, you know, is it just your land? So it's budget. And then I ask them really what kind of a traveler they are. Just like, you know, I had said to you earlier, are you the kind of person that likes to be scheduled? You like to have a couple of activities. You want to have your dinner reservations and your breakfast and your lunches all set up. Or are you the person that wants to lay on the beach? Because that's a different kind of trip. And then, you know, I, I kind of, it depends on who I'm working with, but I kind of will ask the kind of questions that lead me to understand how well that person 
knows the destination and what kind of travel they've done in the past so that I know when I have that conversation with them, that initial conversation, how much I'm going to need to be spending with respect to education on some of those concepts versus, oh my gosh, they, you know, they traveled and, you know, let's just get right into, you know, the entire planning process. So then you've had these initial phone conversations and then throughout the, you know, course of planning the trip and then on the trip itself, just kind of what's that back and forth communication look like? I almost always like to put, and it's, it's so basic, but it really helps them. I like to put a day-to-day -day itinerary together where I say May 7th, fly to Italy. May 8th, arrive in Rome. Uh, you know, transfer from Rome to the Amalfi Coast. Three nights, you know, in Sorrento or Positano. And I really like to go through day to day to day. Why? Because Sometimes if they're trying to get three different destinations in a very short trip, that's kind of showing them, gosh, there's a lot of travel time involved and do I really want to do that? And then after they kind of agree to mm -hmm. the structure of the itinerary and me just going through their budget, their dates and mm -hmm. things like that, you know, then I begin to work with whatever supplier it is and provide them with the pricing information. And then from there, you know, it's, it's then, the booking process. Yeah, and then it's, you know, just to kind of wrap it all up, she will send, you know, final documents that goes over everything. We have this fabulous app that we are able to put all of your flight information, all of your tours, your hotels, all at the, you know, touch of your tips of your fingertips. I don't know what I just said, but basically it's in an app <laughs> so you can see all your travel details on your phone. On your phone and then, you know, if you want a conversation with Linda before you travel, you know, that line of communication is open. And then typically once you return home, you have a conversation to find out what worked, Always. what didn't work, and just kind of have that communication yeah. so that you know how to best serve your clients yeah. in that destination moving right. forward. And that goes back to the point of when we talk about vetting and understanding, like how was the hotel, how was that restaurant? Because when you're getting that feedback from clients, then you know for future trips, if something was a little bit like, huh, that was okay, maybe that's the client, or maybe it's, the restaurant or hotel. So it's just kind of understanding and having that constant, constant communication. So I've had a few people share that they are interested in potentially being a travel advisor. And I think it's always interesting to hear how people who are doing something, how they got into the line of business. So Linda, tell us how you became a travel advisor. The way in which I got involved in this business was really at the time and you know, the person who's really become my best friend and who I respect more than anyone else that I could ever think about in this business. Nancy Scorby, the Scorby and Scorby Travel. Right, <laughs> I mean, you know, Nancy and I began to work together on philanthropic um, efforts. And then, you know, she asked me to join her in the business and never did I ever know how much of a passion this would become and how it would change my life. Look at you, you know, you, you, I mean, you've kind of gotten in, in you know, in a different way. I wouldn't way. be doing this if it wasn't for you, if it wasn't right. for Nancy. So it's been this like snowball effect, but for, you're a unique situation because your friend was doing it, but yeah. like talk about for someone who's right. like, okay, great, Linda, like that's all well and good for you, but what about me? Yeah. How do I yeah. get into yeah. this? And, and, <laughs> and, and there's a big caveat to be said there. There are in fact, the resources where you can do that. I'll speak of Scorby Travel. We are a part of, as I stated before, Oasis Travel Network. And within that hierarchy that includes seven, 800 different agents, home-based agents, there's a new to travel and Signature Travel Network, the other consortium I spoke about, there's a new to travel. So there are built in structures for people who are new to the business to begin to educate you and make you understand what it is like to begin working as a travel advisor. Some people new in the business get, still get involved and there are many brick and mortar agencies that exist throughout the United States. They begin working at one of those and that's the, you know where they develop some of the skills and this is a big caveat. There's a very, very steep 
learning curve that exists when you're booking travel. It takes a long time to really understand the process. And while there are, I guess, I'm not familiar with them, but I guess there are some junior colleges where you can like go for like a two year degree in travel. Um, education, I feel like occurs in the trenches, you know, doing mm -hmm. the business, whether it's, you know, working, booking flights, booking trips, um, you know, you, you need to do that. Others who get involved in the business maybe don't necessarily go to a brick and mortar agency, but maybe they work on the hotel end or maybe they work on the kind of middleman supplier end. So some people do develop those skills in a different manner, but there is, you know, a learning curve. I think it's very much connection based. So if you're depending on where you are in the country, maybe do some Googling and find, you know, travel agents in your area and see if you can reach out to one of them and see if, you know, what's their structure like? Are they just one agent? Are they part of a larger group? And ask about that larger group and do they like working there? And are they looking for more advisors? Or, you know, I think in so many of our different careers, like it is 100% networking, 100% relationship based. And, Very much so. you know, find the time, reach out, ask someone. And if you really genuinely think that you want to do this, then take it to the next level and, you know, be connected with maybe the agency that that agent you're talking to is working exactly. for or seek out a you know a consortium like Oasis Travel Network and figure out how you can get in that way so mm -hmm. I think there's many different avenues that you could try but I think it's determining you know whether or not this is something that you genuinely want to do and with the full understanding that while there are incredible perks that come along with this job there is also a lot of work and as linda mentioned like it takes a lot of time to build up your client base and you mm -hmm. have to be okay or maybe you're doing this on the side of your regular job and so you're building that client base while you're still getting a steady income from something else right so that you know it's you're kind of spending that time while still making money in other ways because that money from that client base might not come immediately we have finally made it to the final question of this probably very long video, even though I said I would keep it short and sweet. Um, if people want to work with you, tell them you know what you specialize in and the best way to get in touch with you to plan their next fabulous adventure. It's very <laughs> easy to get in touch with me you know, through my email. And I don't know if you want me to I'll put share. it here. Yeah. I'll put it here. I mean, you, know, you can share my email. <laughs> yeah. And really what I specialize in is international. Really the only domestic planning I do is Napa Valley, I, just because I like <laughs> wine so much. But, but it's true. I mean, yeah. that is really my specialty exists outside of the United States. Um, Multi-generational travel, destination weddings, um, multiple destinations like longer trips. And I would also say category categorically um, <laughs> exotic destinations, because those are some of the ones that I personally like. What constitutes an exotic destination? India. Yep. And, you know, my other, I think I've been nine times, South Africa, East Africa, West Africa, within, <laughs> there's just, oh my God, there's just so much I won't even Kenya, go on. Tanzania, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Zimbabwe, Morocco. That, um, and then Bhutan. Um, South America, to me, one of the most undervisited destinations and so worthy of, you know, travelers' Argentina, attention. Argentina, Patagonia, Chile. Bolivia, Colombia. So many incredible destinations. But you also do a lot of Europe travel. Oh, no, a no, no, lot. No. My gosh. I, I mean, how, how much in, in, ter in terms of Europe? I really do um also for spring break i do a lot of like mexico and caribbean destinations and caribbean destinations so she course. does it all she specializes in quite literally everything yeah. <laughs> okay mama i think i think that does it for our video thank you for breaking it all down for us and it's been fascinating it ha <laughs> i'm sure it's been fascinating for them <laughs> 
I do have to give her a shout out and say that there would be no possible way that I would be doing what I am doing right now with Gals Broad Getaways and, you know, my own personal travels, you know, for both business and for pleasure if it wasn't for my mom, Linda, and if it wasn't for Nancy Scorby, who is the owner of Scorby Travel and Cruise. So... I am forever grateful yeah. for and, you, Mama and, and, Linda. And Thank if I, you. If Nancy were here, I would be hugging her immensely. I can't tell Air you. Air hugs, Nancy. Yeah. No, <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I'm always, I'm always saying. So, my friends, I hope that this video somewhat pulled back the curtain a little bit on the industry. I tried to keep it short and sweet. We'll see how this all comes out in the edit. We all know that both... Linda and myself can be a bit long-winded. But if you do have any other questions, please drop them in the comments. And if you're thinking about joining a Gals Abroad getaway, which I hope you are, check the link in the caption and get on our newsletter. This is where we announce any new trips and give exclusive access and early bird pricing. So this is the place to be, I promise. I hope this video was helpful and for even more travel tips and destination guides, please hit that subscribe button and check out some of my other videos. Bye.